My name is Derek Holsinger and I drive a 1968 Camaro SS. I'm originally from Reedsville, Ohio, and now reside in Belpre, Ohio now. I've lived here for, I think it's going on 12 years now, maybe 13. I'm 41 years old, I'm happily married, I have a son named Parker, he's eight. Uh, we do a lot of cruising around in the summertime. Uh, we go to car shows, we drive just cruising up and down the highway, we hit back roads. Uh, we have a good time, he really enjoys it. Um, I've worked as a chemical operator for 23 years. Um, everybody I work with, I've pretty much converted to car people as well. They started off not being into it, but now the, the more we do it, the more they get into it and they see what I build all the time and they really, really enjoy seeing the things I, I bring to work and I show them we, we actually make stuff at work sometimes for my cars. Um, I got several friends now that's all into the car scene here in the local area that I've all pretty much, I think it's my fault that I've kind of caused them to all get into the Turbo LS scene but I'm always building something. I'm always fabricating something. I get a lot of people that come around day to day. Um, my father, he's always kind of been good with helping out and he uh, really been a big inspiration for me. What got me into cars was when my father would take me to the drag strip when I was young. Uh, pretty much been going to the racetrack since I was in diapers, uh, several years. I mean, we, we went for every year, every weekend, up until I was probably, probably, probably in my 20s. Then that passed the torch to me and now I've been going quite a bit as well, but not nearly like we used to. I hope we can get back into it again like we once were. Uh, the reason I chose this car to build was um, the first car I remember my dad having was actually a 68 Camaro. It was a uh, red, just a mild built car, it had a big block Chevy in it. And that car stuck with me through the years. I've got lots of old pictures of it and stuff. There's one picture of me, I'm about three sitting in the front seat, the helmet on. But uh, just, I always liked the, the body lines and the way the car looked. And from that day forward, I just knew that was the car that I always wanted. Uh, the way my car makes me feel when I drive it is the easiest way to describe it is you feel like you're a superhero. Uh, the braking ability, the, the acceleration of the car is truly second to none. I have never been in a car that reacts the way that car does. It's smooth and fast, but yet still quiet and no one would ever know. And that's probably my favorite thing about the car. <laughs> Uh, the things that make my car unique, I believe, is probably the paint. I really took a long time, it took about four years to decide on the paint color, and I've never really seen another car like it that's exactly the same color. I've seen some that are close, but that really does set it off. That and the stance of the car and the wheels and the sheer power of the car. Okay, the, the horsepower of the car is kind of unknown at the moment, but I do have some numbers. It was on the dyno at one time when I was first building it and had a little bit of a, an issue. I had an intercooler pipe blow off. It wouldn't make any more than 15 PSI before blowing the pipe off because it had an issue with the clamp that I had and I didn't have a replacement with me. In fact, it, it hit the ground so hard when the pipe flew off, it actually caved the pipe in and stamped diamond plate into the side of it. I actually have the pipe with me. You can see the, the din in it. We definitely did a number on it that day, but we stuck it back on there and the best numbers we could make with it barely clamped without it blowing off was 887 and that was only at 14 pounds. So judging by the math, it, the car should be making somewhere around just a rough estimate between 1,000 and 1,200 wheel. Uh, my engine that's in the car is a 370 steel block LS. Uh, the cylinder heads are stock LS3. The intake is also stock LS3. It has forged rods and pistons with a stock crank. Um, the engine was completely built by me and spec'd by me. Uh, the camshaft is a TIC Stage 2 turbo cam. Uh, the valve train is all uh, Brian Tooley racing. Um, the exhaust manifolds are truck manifolds that I have modified to use for turbocharging. Uh, 
They've been cut and spliced about every way and piping ran forward instead of rearward like they were originally. Uh, the turbocharger is an S476R by forceinductions.com. Uh, the downpipe is a five inch downpipe that splits into dual three inch exhaust going out the back through uh, Borla uh, Pro XS mufflers. And the exhaust runs clear to the tail of the car. The tailpipes were pretty tricky to build going through the rear suspension of the car because it's so tight. On the body of the car, uh, the car is actually None of it's original at this point. Every panel has been cut off and replaced. Uh, spent two years on the rotisserie, uh, flipped upside down every which way, welded. It's got miles of welding wire in it. It took a long time to get it fitted and perfected the way it is, but every body line and body gap is completely perfect now. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Uh, my interior in my car is actually, it's got Recaro seats, uh, TMI uh, headliner, TMI uh, door panels. Uh, the dash has been completely ripped out of it and redone and put back in. Every piece of it is brand new inside. Uh, sound deadener, there's probably 100 pounds of sound deadener in the car, in the doors and in the floor and in the back. And then the, the carpet that's in the car had a lot of, of uh, actual sound deadener on the back of it as well. Um, the car is very quiet. When you close the doors up, it's it's not too bad at all. It's really quiet for an old car. Yeah, the, the harnesses are Schroth harnesses, which are really high-end stuff. It's the same thing the Air Force or NASA use in, in their planes and you know the space shuttle and things like that. Uh, the harnesses are really, really nice. You can tell when you put them on, they're very quality pieces. Uh, the suspension I installed on the car, uh, it all came from Detroit Speed and Engineering. Uh, it's got a hydroform front subframe, uh, spline front sway bar. Everything is extremely heavy duty and it handles very, very well. Uh, the rear suspension is actually a five link. It's got a, a four link with a panhard rod. Uh, very smooth and it articulates very well. Uh, the shocks are JRI from like basically like NASCAR. They're phenomenal. I've never had a shock be that good, but they truly are probably the best shock I've ever owned. And I've had quite a bit of adjustable shocks like that over the years, but yeah, they're definitely second to none. But uh, the car handles like it's on rails. I wouldn't change anything about it. Uh, the braking system on the car, it's got C6 Corvette uh, brake booster and master cylinder, and then it has C6 Z06 Corvette brakes all the way around. So it has six piston calipers on the front and four piston calipers on the rear. Uh, the traction control system on the car is really special. It took me three years to actually come across it online. I'd been searching for it for years and couldn't find it. It's specifically built for a Corvette. Uh, it's an aftermarket system, and there's only just a few of them out there. And I got lucky enough to actually find a second one as well, so I have a backup if needed. And it's really something, the way it controls is you can dial in between uh, zero slip and 25% slip as to how much it can spin the rear tires. So if you're feeling froggy, you can just let the thing just spin like crazy, or you can turn it down to where it's 25% slip, clear down to 10, but I have found that around 10 to 15 gives the best results as far as ET. And it really is surprising how it does it. It's phenomenal how fast it is off the line. Uh, my wheels that I purchased for the car are built by Forge Line. They're, they're called GA3s. The fronts are 18 by nine and a half and the rears are 18 by 11 and a half. Uh, I had room to go with 12s on the rear, but I chose not to because I just didn't want to have any rubbing issues. Uh, the rear tire is a 335-30-18, and the front is a 275-35-18. Uh, I had, the paint and body was done by a good friend of mine. His name is Jason Mulligan of Jay's Premier Paintworks. Um, his skills are way beyond my own. I've painted cars in the past, but I knew I couldn't do what this car needed. And I got with him and it took a little persuading, but I finally got him to come my way and we worked really well together and I'm really glad that we've done it. And hopefully we'll get to build another car in the future together. But otherwise, every bit of the you know, modifications to the car or any of the fabrication was entirely done by myself. 
Uh, future plans for the car is hopefully just driving it. I, I've spent so much time building the car and engineering the car that I hope I don't have any problems. I'm not saying that's not going to happen. Things break all the time, but I, I really hope that this car holds up for several years and I get plenty of good miles out of it without having to touch it and move on to something else working on other cars while I just drive this one. Uh, if there's anything I could pass along to, to people when they're building cars, I would say build your own stuff. Even if you fail and you have stuff break, who cares? It doesn't matter. You should just do it for you and don't worry about what others think. I'll respect someone who has a $500 car that they built versus someone who had a million dollar car that they bought. Shout outs I have are for good friends of mine who've helped me along the way. Of course, with this video, Zach Hendershot, he really, he does a phenomenal job with video editing. He's done some videos for me in the past and I'm sure we'll have many more in the future. Uh, Jason Mulligan of Jay's Premier Paintworks, he helped me with the paint and body on the car. A uh, big shout out to my dad. He helped me every step of the way. I had questions, he always had answers. Uh, my wife for being understanding to work on it all the time because I definitely spend a lot of time in the garage. Uh, my son for, you know, brightening my day by coming out and helping me sometimes here and there and sometimes just, you know, making me laugh while I'm out here. But uh, when it comes to people, there's a lot of people that's helped me a little bit here and there. Uh, I got several friends that helped me with welding, uh, Kevin Logston, uh, Shane Coger, he's been a, a helping hand all along the way. Um, just really everyone in my family and, and friends have really been a big help with getting things done and helping me do other things so I have more time to finish cars and stuff. So really appreciate everyone. The car scene for me anymore, I find myself getting a little older. I don't get to get out and see everybody else in their cars anymore like I used to. Like in, on the weekends, I used to go out and cruise and see people and street race and all kinds of crazy stuff. But as time has went, I just don't have as much free time anymore. I work a lot, so if it wasn't for that, taking up so much time, I probably probably would get into it a little more, but for right now, I'm pretty much just focused on going to a little bit of car shows here and there and just cruising for me. I really don't see anyone else out hardly when I'm out. Every now and then I'll catch someone, but for the most part, I'm just hanging out in the garage and people bringing their cars over here and hanging out with me. That's pretty much the scene for me anymore. I hopefully get into it a little bit more this summer, but we'll see how things go. Uh, what got me into this particular style of first gen Camaro was actually Big Red. This car right here was on the, the front of uh, Hot Rodding, or I'm sorry, Hot Rod magazine back when I was 16 years old. And I remember seeing that car for the first time and thought, I've never seen a first gen car built like that. And it pretty much became my dream to build that car at that time. Uh, I, I guess I actually just got this magazine today. So it's kind of crazy that I'm doing this video shoot and I've got this magazine at the same time that that was the car that I always wanted to build. My dream car all my life since I was 16. I have had the car sitting behind me in my head ever since then. I've wanted to build it my entire life and never had the funds or the skills at the time. But as I got older and kind of honed the skills and bought and sold cars, before long I finally realized it was time to try to do it. So I purchased the car. It took me seven years to build it. Uh, I worked on it constantly. I probably had at least, at minimum, working on it every single week, at least probably 20 hours a week in it. And that was for seven years. So it really took a toll on my time and free time, but it was worth it and I'm really glad I did it. <laughs>